Pushing Back the Shadows, support and awareness for mental health. Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Pushing Back the Shadows podcast. My name is Alex Davis, I'm the founder of Pushing Back the Shadows and main author behind the blog. Now, I think it's time that I took you on another little step in my journey. Um, Because one of the things that I do a lot of on this podcast is I talk about... um, different things uh, relating to mental health, whether it's um, some of the the encouragement that I can give you, or whether it's explanations, um, or even some of the, the hot topics that have been um, trending in the news and things like that. But one thing I don't do a lot of is I don't talk about my journey. And part of where I started pushing back the shadows is to talk about my journey, because I do find that a lot of the time we would share our experiences with each other and that can bring its own sense of encouragement, its own sense of hope, because we know that somebody else is going through similar things. Now, as I keep saying, and I've said a lot, that um, no two journeys are identical. My journey is different to your journey, it's different to somebody else's journey. I mean, they do have similarities. There are things, you know, two people will self-harm, Um, A third person won't self-harm, but might have the suicidal thoughts that, say, the first person did. You know what I'm trying to say. But I still don't seem to be very good, lately, at sharing my journey. So it's time that I did. Now, this is the next chapter in my journey, because I I don't know about you guys. I tend to to think of mine more as... um, almost like a book in that regard, because I'm an author, I think a lot about books and stuff, and there do seem to be a lot of um, references into, uh, references to chapters in some of the things that I do. And so, I need to tell you about this next chapter. Okay, so if you go on the website, you can hear all about... um, my unwritten chapter, you can hear about uh, the beginning chapters, but what is this chapter? Well, it's something that um, that's kind of come from the discussions that I've been having with the psychiatrist um, while I've been under the, the talking therapies um, and kind of the outpatients department and that sort of thing. And once I actually got my head round it, and once I'd actually looked up you know, what it meant and and worked to understand it, it actually made a lot of sense. But it's still something that's a little new to me, and thus far I haven't actually shared it. So those of you listening to the podcast, uh, you guys are going to be the first to know, and it's a bit nerve-wracking, I'm sure you can tell, Um, because obviously, you know, I don't know much about it, I'm still learning. So actually at that point, I'll I'll throw this open. If any of you um, listening have any experience of what I'm about to tell you, then please do get in touch, I'd be interested to hear your stories. What is this um, next chapter? Well, as I mentioned, I've been talking to the psychiatrist, and for a long time he was a bit kind of well, a bit hit and miss on any kind of potential diagnosis, anything like that, because um, as with any aspect of mental health, you want to avoid putting a label on it for as long as possible just to make sure you've got the right label. And some of the things that I was feeling, I was fairly adamant could be bipolar. As it turns out, it's not. So... What I actually have, in addition to the depression and the anxiety, is I actually have borderline personality disorder. Yep, that's right, I've said it. I have borderline personality disorder. Now, as I say, it's not something that I know a lot about. So, what I've done is I've gone on to mind.org.uk to have a look. 
and it basically describes it as a type of personality disorder. Um, you might be diagnosed with a personality disorder if you have difficulties with how you think and feel about yourself and other people and are having problems in your life as a result. Now immediately when he came out with personality disorder, because this is the thing, it took him, um, it didn't take him long to come out with those two words, personality disorder. It was the borderline that took a little while to um, to come through. But what it actually is, as far as I can tell, is you tend to have, and this is according to mind again, at least five of the following things, and they've lasted for a long time or have a big impact on your daily life. So these are, uh, you feel very worried about people abandoning you and would do anything to stop that happening. You have very intense emotions that last from a few hours to a few days and can change quickly. Uh, for example, from feeling very happy and confident to suddenly feeling low and sad. You don't have a strong sense of who you are and it can change significantly depending on who you're with. You find it very hard to make and keep a stable relationships. You feel empty a lot of the time. You act impulsively and do things that could harm you, uh, such as binge eating, using drugs or driving dangerously. You often self-harm or have suicidal feelings. You have very intense feelings of anger, which are really difficult to control. And when very stressed, you may also experience paranoia or dissociation. Okay, now all of these you can find, I'm putting the link to mind.org.uk in the description so you can find this, because obviously I know that's a, quite a long list to have gone through in such a short space of time. But, so that in a sense, is um, where this diagnosis would come from. If you have around five um, or more of those following things, and they've lasted for a long time. Does that fit me? Well, I'd like to take you back a little ways, and we'll have a look, and we'll see whether or not I actually agree with this diagnosis. Let's take a walk. You're listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. So when I look at this in a little more depth, I find that there are bits that I agree with. Um, bits where I look and I can see why he reached the diagnosis that he did. Um, things like the uh, feeling empty a lot of the time. That, that in itself is one of the things that I notice the most. A lot of the time... I feel empty. Whether that's um, well, whether that's feeling the numbness or just thinking there's nothing there, or even just sitting almost like a, a shell, for want of a better word, I tend to get that empty feeling a lot. And that combined with feeling worried about people abandoning me. Um, the self-harm, the very intense feelings of anger, and finding it hard to make and keep stable relationships. Those are definitely some of the ones that I relate to. Intense emotions that last for a few hours to a few days as well and can change quickly. Because one thing, um, one thing that Cheryl and I have both noticed is that I can seem to almost rapidly cycle between moods and emotions. I can be, you know, high as a kite one minute to really down in the dumps the next. And a lot of the time there isn't even any reason why. It's just the way that it seems to work. And see now this is one of the reasons that we thought potentially, possibly, maybe it could have been borderline uh, bipolar which okay granted we've been um, we've been told that it's not but it was one of those things you know the rapid cycling bipolar the fact that the moods can go up and can go down and it can really be that kind of for want of a better word but that kind of the only word I can think for it is kind of a flip-flop you, know, you go from one to the next to the next to the next and granted they say that bipolar is usually over a longer period of time you know you have um, say a couple of good weeks a couple of bad weeks or a couple of good months a couple of bad months however it works 
Um, ultra rapid cycling does tend to fit more along the lines of what um, what this borderline personality disorder tends to be as well. But so there are a lot of things that that I can relate to, and one of the things that I like about Mind, and this is something that if you click over onto the link, um, you will you will see, is that they do have uh, people talking about their own experiences. They'll have people uh, quotes from different people who are talking about how they feel with whatever condition it is that the page is dedicated to. And some of these things really do um, resonate with me. I mean, and these are all kind of anonymous. They're not necessarily, um, they don't have a name attached. But so one of them is the worst part of my BPD is the insecure relationships. When I am attached to someone, they are my whole world and it is crippling. I care so deeply about how long they take to reply to an email or their tone of voice because I'm so afraid of losing them. And it may seem a bit, um, you know, you may be sat there going, oh, for goodness sake, you know, I'll, you know, grow up a little bit. But really, it's not, it's not like that. You do get almost emotionally paralysed by it. And this is, this is something that I can really, really relate to because the number of times I've gone through this exact same feeling. You're wondering about how different people are perceiving things. You say the wrong thing and somebody gives you a bit of a... Not necessarily a negative reaction, but a reaction that you weren't necessarily expecting. They give you all sorts of things like that and you think, Oh my goodness, what have I done? You know, it, it's no good. Oh, I can't do this. You know, they, they, they must hate me. And so on. And even if it's not the case, your brain rationalises it. Your brain says, well, actually, <laughs> yeah, you've stuffed it. And it is it is that kind of that feeling. And reading through these, it was something that actually once I did a lot more research and I had a bit more, um, a bit more time to actually look into it, I kind of went, you know what, yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. I understand why he's come to this conclusion. And, yeah, I think... I think I agree with the conclusion itself. Which is kind of hard, because... There are elements that I do question. I mean, of course, you know, nobody gets a diagnosis and actually doesn't question any of it. Because that's what we are, that's who we are, we question. We don't necessarily understand how people came to the conclusion they came to, and so we will ask questions. It's it's our default nature. But naturally with this, and with any kind of mental health, there is an exploratory nature involved as well. Because there are answers that, that particularly I want that he might not yet have. Like what caused it. Because, you know, this is um, this is where some of the, the tricky parts come in. And for those of you who've got no experience of this, um, this is a particular part where, um, where it goes almost into a grey area. Because there's no clear reason why some people experience difficulties associated with um, borderline personality. Um, it can be anything from stressful or traumatic life events to genetic factors, and it's difficult to work out what's caused it. It really is. And it's something that um, I'll try and keep you guys updated because I don't know why mine has been caused. I don't know why I am the way I am, for want of a better word. So it's something that I'm definitely going to be looking into more. But while we're here, you and I, let's have another little look and see if we can see any anything else about borderline personality, things that I can um, relate to, and all sorts of things like that.
enable Pushing Back the Shadows to continue supporting people in the mental health community, their friends and their family. By pledging just $1 a month, you could help us to continue supporting people with depression, with anxiety, with bipolar and other mental illnesses. You can also unlock exclusive rewards, behind the scenes, uh, sneak previews of upcoming posts and much, much more. So head over to www.patreon.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS to find out more. So I'm doing a little more digging, and this is um, some of the things that, again, I can relate to some of these, but this is some of the ways that you would react, be it to yourself or to other people, um, like thoughts or feelings. So you'd feel lonely, you'd feel overwhelmed by the strength of your emotions, how quickly they change. You'd feel like there was something inherently wrong with you and that it's your fault if bad things happen to you because you deserve them. Uh, you feel like you don't know what you want from life, or what you like or dislike. You feel like you're a bad person, or not a real person at all. And you can feel like you're a child in an adult world. And these things would, um, you might behave by self-harming or attempting suicide, overspending or binge eating, uh, using recreational drugs, alcohol or smoking to try to cope with your emotions, uh, quitting just before achieving something or avoiding activities where you think you might fail or be disappointed, often changing jobs, hobbies, goals or plans, and keeping yourself very busy so you're never alone. Then if you come on to towards other people, you might think um, that friends or partners will leave you forever if they're angry or upset with you, uh, like no one understands you or you're not like other people and will never be able to understand them, uh, that people are either completely perfect and kind or bad and hurtful and there's no middle ground. This is sometimes uh, called like black and white thinking or splitting. Um, you feel like the world is a scary and dangerous place and you want to run away and hide. And Again, the behaviours would be getting very angry or frustrated with people, struggling to trust people, wanting to be close to people but worrying they will leave or reject you and so avoiding them, having unrealistic expectations of people or contacting them very frequently, ending relationships with friends or partners because you think they might leave you or anxiously looking out for signs that people might reject you. Really, it's... It's a roller coaster because the emotions can change very, very quickly. And as I'm looking at some of these things, I'm thinking, well, yeah, do you know what? It makes sense. It does. It fits. And it's something that I, I am still coming to terms with, something that I'm still trying to trying to work out in my head. Now a lot of people would say, you know, what's in the what's in the diagnosis, but actually the diagnosis itself, the label that comes with it, can actually be quite helpful. I mean it's something that can bring that little bit of of comfort because it can help us feel like our suffering is validated, can't it? I mean, some people do find that the diagnosis itself is completely unhelpful. They might disagree with with the actual system of diagnosis itself, um, thinking that it kind of stigmatises their struggle. And even if it does or it doesn't, it's kind of for different people whether or not they find it useful. Personally, I find the diagno diagnosis helpful because it then means that I know what I'm dealing with almost like you know when you get um, when you find like a, a disease or something and you find out what it is and that then helps you treat it or manage it or however that would work you know it's things like that and I find it helpful to know exactly what I'm dealing with but that in itself is the struggle. That's why I've been struggling, as it turns out. 
I don't know where it goes from here. I don't really even know what it means. One thing I do know is that, yes, it gives me the label to identify what I'm struggling with, but at the same time it does not change who I am. Because this is a long-term thing, and looking back, particularly at some of the symptoms, I can safely say, well, yeah, do you know what? I've had these for a while. I recognise them. So, it doesn't change anything. I'm still me. At the same time, it changes everything. Because I now know what I'm dealing with. And through knowing what I'm dealing with, I'll be able to start looking at how I can effectively cope with it. I can start putting the right treatments into place so that either it goes or I learn to live with it. So those are my thoughts on it and as I said at the start of this episode if you have some experience with it please do let me know because as I keep saying I'm still fairly new to this. I'm still getting to grips with it, if you like. It's something that I don't know a lot about, something that I'm trying to learn about, but it does seem to be one of those reasonably broad and confusing topics. But that's all from me. I shall catch you next week for episode 39. No, not 39. 40. Episode 40. It comes to something when I forget exactly what episode I'm on. Um, but it goes to show that we've done a lot of uh, podcasts so far. And it's really good to have you guys along. We do enjoy um, doing the podcasts, me and the other people that I get involved. And um, I certainly hope that you keep listening, because it is great to have you with us. All right, you take care. I'm going to stop waffling now. Um, you take care. Have a good week. Catch you next time. You've been listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. To find out more, head over to pushingbacktheshadows.com and hit subscribe to get all of our latest updates straight to your inbox. Alternatively, connect with us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS, or you can visit us on Twitter at Alex Davis PBTS. Enable Pushing Back the Shadows to continue supporting people in the mental health community, their friends and their family. By pledging just $1 a month, you could help us to continue supporting people with depression, with anxiety, with bipolar and other mental illnesses. You can also unlock exclusive rewards behind the scenes, uh, sneak previews of upcoming posts and much, much more. So head over to www.patreon.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS to find out more.